Oh. That is where all of our laws are made. Right there. That is the House of Parliament. In the middle there, there's a statue of Queen Victoria. Mm. You are going to hear quite a bit about Queen Victoria on the Georgia Gate. Oh, okay. So just in the middle there is the Queen Victoria statue. You're going to hear quite a bit about Queen Victoria. Okay. Over here on your left, this building here, that is the Senate. Now, oh. in the Bahamas, the Senate rubber stamps whatever the House of Parliament does. Mm. But that is the Senate building. Now, all of you have seen this building before. That is the Appeals Court and the Supreme Court of the Bahamas. This is where the Anna Nicole Smith trial was held. How many of you remember Anna Nicole Smith? Yeah, yeah, I That's remember. That's the beautiful young lady who married the elderly gentleman. Yes. But that is where the trial was held. Right ah, there. interesting. The monument right there. That monument is designed to remember Bahamians who fought and died with the British in the First and Second World War. Oh. So that is our Garden of Remembrance. Beautiful. The pink building over there. That is the Nassau Public Library and Museum. But that building there was the first prison in the Bahamas. That was actually the first prison in the Bahamas. Mm. Over here on your right, I want you to notice this building on your right. What I want you to take particular note about this building, I want you to notice the building material mm. that is used to construct this building. The Magna Carta Court. This building is significant. It is historic. And you are going to hear quite a bit about this building a little later on. The Magna Carta Court. Okay. Now, by the way, folks, I can see from the garb that this lady is wearing that she is from the Supreme Court. Oh. And here in the Bahamas, you must wear wigs and gowns in the Supreme Court. I see. Okay, when you go to the appeals court, the Supreme Court, you must wear wigs and gowns like mm. they do in Great Britain. Right. I have just entered one of the major banking sectors of our country. The Bahamas economy revolves around three main economic prongs. Mm -hmm. Tourism is our number one industry. Banking and insurance is our second major industry. Mm -hmm. Agriculture and fishery is our third major industry. Directly in front of us over here on your right, that is the Central Bank of the Bahamas. Now the Central Bank is actually owned by the Bahamas government, but it literally monitors all the activities of all the banks in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. St. Andrews Presbyterian Church of Scotland, that is the only Scottish church in the Bahamas. And folks, I have a section where I deal with religion. Mm -hmm. So just bear with me. I'm coming back to the topic of religion. Mm -hmm. All of this pink wall and complex over here. This is where the Governor General lives. <laughs> now the Bahamas is independent. July 10th, 73. That is when we became independent. However, like many of the African countries, like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, India, the Bahamas is a member of British Commonwealth. Mm. So Queen Elizabeth of England is our head of state. And this is where the Queen of England's representative, the Governor General, lives. Why this she... is also where the Queen of England lives when she comes here. She's That's all... where she lives. She's all but wrapped up? Of course, they're doing some renovations right here now, but that's where she lives when she comes here. Oh. Yes, that is also where the Duke of Windsor lives. Some of you may have heard about the Duke of Windsor. Yes. The Duke of Windsor was that British gentleman who abdicated the throne of England. Correct. Just so that he could get married to Wally Simpson. Yes. The divorced American lady. Well, that is where the Duke of Windsor and Wally Simpson lived. Wow. And folks, let me tell you, when I was a little boy, we used to call that building the Love Nest. Ah. That's what we used to call that building. The love nest. Oh. You may also notice too that there is a statue of Christopher Columbus there. And let me kind of pull back a little bit to kind of give you some background. Around 1490, 
There was a Genoan seaman by the name of Christopher Columbus. Everybody thought he was a fool. Everybody thought he was a fool. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because he dared to think that the world was round. Mm -hmm. Everybody, all of the intelligentsia of that age, everybody believed that the world was flat except Christopher Columbus. Mm -hmm. And so Christopher Columbus went to Queen Isabel of Spain and he literally tantalized Queen Isabella. He tantalized her to assist him in doing an expedition. Isabella was not happy about it, but Christopher Columbus tantalized her to such an extent that she gave him the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, and Christopher Columbus left Spain, and he went in a westerly direction. By the way, that's the American Embassy right there. Oh. I'm gonna show you the new one. They're building a new one. So, Christopher Columbus left, went to Spain. And three years afterwards, Christopher Columbus returned to Spain, but he came back from the East Indies, from India, from the Philippines, came back from that way. When the British discovered that Christopher Columbus was back, the British went to Queen Isabella, and they asked Queen Isabella for the route that Christopher Columbus used. And the British came here. Now you've got to remember, at that time, the British were the major seafaring power in the world. And so the British got the route that Christopher Columbus used, and they came here. And the British never left the Bahamas until July 10th, 1973, when we became independent. So we became independent July 10th, 73. So from 1494, the British left, came to the Bahamas, and they never left until July 10th, 1973, when we became independent. I'm going to give you an opportunity to see how the British mind worked, particularly as it relates to the defense of these islands and with respect to their offense with, re with regard to the protection of these islands. You're going to get a glimpse of what they did and how they did. Oh. Now this first facility that we're going to see called Fort Charlotte. And by the way, on the tour today, you're going to see a lot of red trees like these. Mm -hmm. so these plants are called the Royal Poinciana. Mm. The Royal Poinciana. This is the time of year when they bloom. It's beautiful. And you can see we have been having lots of rain. We've been having lots of rain. And they, they really start to explode once the rain comes. So, as you go on the tour today, you're going to see lots of them. They're called the Royal Poinciana. Mm. Now, this is what we call the officers' mess. That is where the British officers lived when they came here. And look in the background, that's where the enlisted men lived, over there. But I want to show you something here. I want you to see something here. you to look your far left, way in the distance. Tell me what you see. Way in the distance, your far left. Uh, trees and... Can you see the water tower? Way in the distance? Uh, yeah. Everybody see it? Yeah. I can see it. You can see it? Now, I want you to notice where that top water tower is as it relates to this fort over here on your right. I want you to notice the relationship between the two of them. Mm -hmm. That is going to take on some perspective when we get up there. I want you to observe that. I want you to take a note of it because it's going to come into interview a little later on. Mm. All right. There's something else I want you to notice here. 
I want you to look to your right. This is where the deep water is. Most of the water around this island is shallow. Mm -hmm. Very shallow. But this is where the deep water is. And notice what the British did. The British constructed this fort adjacent to where the deep water is. Secondly, the British, who were the major seafaring power in the world, they knew that ships that were built and designed in those days were built and designed for deep water ground. So this is where the deep water is. Notice the British constructed these forts adjacent to where the deep water is. Mm. Gonna take on some perspective in a little while, so I want you to observe. Over here, folks, look here. These are almonds, A-L-M-O-N-D-S. Oh. Mm. We throw them away here. I know in the United States you all have to pay so much for them, but yeah. we throw them away here because they grow here wild. Oh. They literally grow here wild. Right here. Oh. All of these are almonds, A-L-M-O-N-D-S. Oh. They literally <laughs> grow in the Bahamas wild. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see where the local people live and how they live. I also want to give you an opportunity to see Bahama. Because we are going to Atlantis. And whenever the discussion of Atlantis comes into view, Bahama is usually a typical subject matter as well. So I want you to see Mahama so that when the discussion emanates, you'll be able to speak with some degree of substance um, on the subject matter. So I want you to be aware. These trees here are grape trees, G-R-A-P-E-S. Look at here, look at the grapes. Mm -hmm. This tree had so much that it's breaking down. Those are grapes. Yeah. They are edible. You yeah. can eat them. They give taste. them another month with the rain we've had yesterday. Give them another month and they will be ready for eating. When they ripe, they turn purple and they are very sweet. We call them sea grapes. Mm. Over here on your right coming up, this area is called fish fry. Fish fry. Anytime my wife does not cook home, this is where I come to eat. Okay? This is where I come to eat. They've got very good food. Oh boy. It's over here? Look at the grapes here, folks. Look. Those are grapes. They grow here wild. They literally grow here wild. 